Hey, Viola, I had a patient the other day who was so nervous and I kind of wanted to give him a little CBD to mellow him out. Can I do that? Find out today on Medical History Mysteries. patients that come in and they usually look us up and down and say how we look nice and we look like a nice person, but they really don't want to be here and they really don't like us. We've all heard it right as medical or dental professionals. Now, sometimes patients want to have something to kind of take the edge off in their appointment. So sometimes we'll prescribe them something, but now with, you know, depending on what state you're in, cannabis and CBD have become viable alternatives for anxiety relief. But some offices want to offer this as something we can do to keep them comfortable. What's your take on that? Oh my, is my take on that. Uh, I I would firmly suggest that each office view this as an individual response to what, how they want to treat anxiety in their, in their office and for their patients. But keep in mind, it's one thing to provide a, a dose or two of a benzodiazepine that's been prescribed to your patient um, and, and therefore the patient's taking it uh, as prophylaxis, let's say, uh, for anxiety during the procedure. It's quite another thing to offer your patient something like CBD oil that you maintain as office stock, if you will, um, mostly because a lot of states now have patient-specific regulations that require you not, not to have office stock, that each person has to have their own uh, dose of medication. But CBD is a problem because CBD is not regulated. CBD is really considered to be a dietary supplement. And CBD can vary based on the manufacturer. The, the long story is, and made short is that CBD is legal in this country because hemp was descheduled. And therefore, everything derived from hemp is also now descheduled, meaning it's no longer a controlled substance. So since CBD is derived from hemp, CBD is no longer a controlled substance and therefore people can buy it and use it. But remember, that is under the auspices of, you know, Department of Agriculture saying you can use hemp derived CBD uh, for your own purposes. Again, self-medicated as a dietary supplement. When we cross that threshold and bring it into the office and say, I'm going to give you CBD to take the edge off your anxiety you're having in the chair right now. Well, number one, I don't know if CBD is going to work as well as you think it will. I don't know if it's going to work as fast as you think it will. I don't know if it's going to work at all because there's no standardization of CBD out there. Each manufacturer makes it the way they want to within certain confines. Now, for it to be legal, it has to be derived from hemp. So some manufacturers are really good about making hemp oil, CBD oil from hemp. But there are some nefarious manufacturers out there that make it synthetically and label it as herbal, or you know, in this case, derived from hemp. But remember, hemp has no more than 0.3% THC. If I make it synthetically as a nefarious manufacturer, I might bump up that THC concentration. And now you're gonna to wanna to buy my stuff more than anybody else's. As a dental practitioner, if you buy it at the grocery store and bring it to your office and people say, wow, that really works great. That may be wonderful, but they may fail a drug test because now they have more THC in their system than they would have if they just used naturally derived, hemp-derived CBD. I saw this posted on social media, this very topic about, you know, maybe considering this as something that you dispense into your practice. And that particular dentist contacted their malpractice insurance provider, and that was a huge no-no. So if this is something that you're thinking of doing or something you are already doing and you haven't talked to your malpractice provider, you might want to pump the brakes and have a chat before you give somebody CBD again. So if a patient does well with CBD and this is something that they want to do, they can get it on their own, take it on their own and come into your practice. They should disclose that they've taken it. Yes. But we should not necessarily be so quick to say, hey, I can help you with that and use a natural approach. We should not be dispensing CBD 
uh, because we're really in a gray area. There's no guidelines for for using a product like CBD in the office as an adjunct to, in, in, in treatment protocol. But let's also consider the fact that even though this is a gray area, there's no hard standing rules or legislation or anything that says that CBD isn't somehow mind altering enough to say, therefore, that the patient later on could make a disclaimer and say, well, I was under the influence of CBD and uh, I don't know what I was signing and therefore I never agreed to that treatment plan. Or for that matter, if you have CBD lying around in the office and your employees are having a rough day, maybe they'll decide to use some CBD and then you're actually practicing under potentially the influence of a substance. And is that covered under your malpractice insurance? Oh, come on, by all the CBDs, you know, it's not mind altering. It's, it's not psychoactive. But the thing is, we don't know what we don't know about CBD. And I don't want to put that through litigation and find out the hard way that uh, I should have known better when uh, it's, it's just easier not to do it at all. Yes. So proceed with caution on this topic. So, all right. Thanks for clearing that up. I think that this is something that, you know, maybe some of us have thought about, but need to take a second thought before we step forward with this. Now I need some CBD. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I know, right? I'm going to go get some of my own. That's obviously <laughs> not in my office. I'll go outside and find it somewhere. We'll see. Anyway. All right. For Medical History Mysteries and for Tom Viola, I'm Pam Maragliano-Muniz, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye.